Grenada becomes the first country to access IDA loan for development of small states' productive sectors. We'll have the details to this story and more in the National Report. Welcome back. With the National Report for today, Thursday, 26 July, I'm Delroy Luzon. Grenada is the first country in the world to access a loan from the International Development Association, the IDA, for the development of the productive sectors of small states. That announcement by Prime Minister Dr. The Right Honorable Keith Mitchell at the launch of the OECS Agricultural Competitiveness Project on Thursday. Grenada has 40 years to pay back a 2.2 million US dollar loan from the IDA with a 10-year grace period. An additional US $30 million is also available for further investment in the agricultural sector. Dr. Mitchell is pleased that through his government's hard work, Grenada is the envy of several countries, not only in the Caribbean, but the entire world. Some things we are doing right led us to this. So in addition to what we're getting here today, we've just accessed 30 million US dollars. That works out to be 80 one million EC dollars. So not only what you see here, we have additional resources we can invest in the sector. And the terms of this 40 years loan, 10 years grace, that means we had to pay nothing for the next 10 years. So I uh, told my younger members of my cabinet, all you're going to have to pay it, not me. I won't be there. 40 years loan, 10 years grace, 0.75 interest. Yeah, you can't see money for 0.75. It's almost 0%. So that's what we're talking about here. Other countries envy this, us for being able to access this money and not. But recently, we got over $125 million from the Green Climate Fund, the only country that has been able to access this. Members of the Fiscal Responsibility Oversight Committee, FRAC, says there is need for intermediate targets to be set to ensure that Grenada's debt-to-GDP ratio does not cross the 55% mark. Chairman of the committee, economist Richard Duncan, told members of the media the targets will help to determine the progress that is being made. The Fiscal Responsibility Oversight Committee says government has recorded compliance in three of the five specific rules and targets of the Fiscal Responsibility Act, which governs matters related to the management of public finances. In its 2017 annual report, the committee said with regard to the wage bill to GDP ratio, government was compliant, but targets are needed. What are the interim targets in trying to get to 55? Where should we be at the end of 2017, 2018, 2019? If we have those targets, the FROC is suggesting, it would help us to focus um, and get a sense as to whether or not we are making the kind of progress that we ought to make. So that's one of the issues that we have raised in the matter of um, helping us to better focus on this particular target. We also made the observation that the data that we have does not include in a comprehensive way what we call the contingent liabilities of statutory bodies. In other words, statutory bodies that have <coughs> debt on their books, those debts constitute public sector debt. And we are uncertain that all of those contingent liabilities are included in the figures that we are looking at. There was compliance in growth in primary expenditure in real terms, as well as primary balance. But there is still work to be done in the area of public sector debt to GDP ratio and contingent liabilities arising from public-private partnerships. During a meeting of the Upper House earlier this week, Leader of Government Business in the Senate, Simon Steele, said the committee will receive a full response to its report, which will also be made available for public consumption. We have also um, explained to the FROC that there isn't a need for this intermediate um, uh, target 
once the primary balance rule, which is, um, which is the primary balance of 3.5% um, of GDP is exceeded, once we achieve that greater than 3.5%, then our debt trajectory continues to, um, to, to move in the right downward direction. The second point, the PPP contingent liability um, rule, the FROX position, again, is that we are non-compliant because of the lack of information. When we started uh, to be monitored from 2016, there have been no public-private partnerships. So their request for data on PPPs is actually irrelevant. This is a national report. Stay tuned, we'll have more news when we return. Look up now! What up now? My name is Jalen Olive, better known as Boise, better known as the Madras, your cultural ambassador, four times Soka Monarch Grenada, two times OECS Monarch, and two times Road Match. Inviting you to Spice Mass 2018. This will be the one to experience. Well, Carnival Friday night is the biggest night because guess what? One stage, one night, two competitions, groovy and power. And guess what? Your artist may be the one. You never know. Come out and see who take the title. Foreigners come down to see it. No vibes, no energy. Rag, flag, bandanas. It's pandemonium on that night, so you don't know. I mean, I will be defending on that night, so make sure and be there. Carnival Friday night, so come on. Number five. John! Step with your hand up in the air. Rag up in the air. Put your flag up in the air. Put the gun up in the air. Put the gun up in the air. Put the gun up in the air. So come on. Welcome back. A U.S. $4 million loan puts Grenada ahead of several regional associates in the realization of a sustainable and transformed agricultural sector. Grenada launched its leg of the OECS Agricultural Competitiveness Project on Thursday under the theme Renewing Our Efforts, Transforming the Agricultural Sector Towards Economic and Social Sustainability. The World Bank-funded program will see the enhancement of access to markets and sales for competitively selected farmers and fishers, the associated aggregators and agro-processors jointly in Grenada and St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Prime Minister Dr. The Right Honorable Keith Mitchell says the project supports government's thrust towards economic growth, which can only materialize if Grenada can reduce its dependence on imported goods. He challenged the beneficiaries to exploit the opportunities before them so they can improve the agricultural activities and increase productivity. For this industry to successfully be able to move forward, it must be able to adapt rapidly to the changing trade regimes. Therefore, my friends, my dear sisters and brothers, we need to push for improved agricultural productivity with sustained gains in employment and income while reducing dependence on imported food. The more we use our local, the healthier we will be. 1,700 farmers, fisherfolk and agro-processors will benefit from the project. This gives Agriculture Minister the Honorable Yolan Bean Hosford hope that all is not lost for the sector. Indeed, this is a breath of fresh air to the sector having struggled with the issue of market access over the years. It is anticipated that the project will impact 1,700 direct beneficiaries through its implementation fees. A prominent feature of this project is its strong technical component, which is designed to offer targeted training to the relevant stakeholders. The project has four components, support for preparation of business plans, implementation of business plans, general agricultural services and enabling environment and project management, monitoring and evaluation. Now to end the news, we recap the story making the headline. Grenada becomes the first country to access IDA loan for development of small states' productive sectors. With that, we end the national report Thursday. On behalf of the entire news team, I'm Delroy Luzon, thanking you for viewing.